China is about to launch the first astronaut crew to board the country's brand new space station, the Tiangong. It's only been orbiting the Earth for a few months, and when completed, the station will only be a fraction of the size of the 20-year-old International Space Station. But these are just the latest steps in a new space race, one in which China might quickly overtake the United States. Today, the space race is more about who has the capacity and the willingness to invest in space for economic benefits and for long-term investment. It's about not just going to space for a few days, but actually establishing permanent presence for economic returns. Namrata Goswami has been researching space policy and specifically the Chinese space program for years. She believes China's current strategy will have a huge impact on the future of life on Earth and elsewhere. The key to how that will happen is on the moon. Resources are playing a much more important role today than it did during the Cold War. The resources that are thought to be there on the moon and including asteroids, it's about trillions of dollars. Ouyang Xiang, who's the head of their lunar program, mentioned that the reason why China is establishing a lunar program is because there are these resources on the moon. It is very significant because China is the only country that has an active mission on the moon today. The impact of that on Earth is if you're able to get back those resources in a logistic system which we are planning, is to tip the scale in terms of resource scarcity. Since 2019, China's had a rover on the surface of the moon with the capacity to prospect the lunar soil for minerals. But equally as important as tapping this vast source of resources is the ability to claim it presence on the moon is seen as offering China leadership and access. The country that actually has a presence on the moon, it will have the most important voice in how that particular regulatory framework will be established. If, for example, they establish a non-interference zone around their, say, research base, that means that if another country wants to land there, they will have to take permission from China. And that is something that I think the future we will have to deal with. The United States' victory in the space race of the Cold War showed the world that capitalism, not communism, was the political economic system of the future. But today's space race is no longer about conflicting ideologies. Instead, China's hoping to use resources and presence to secure influence across the world. It's including its space capacity and partnership building under the Belt and Road Initiative Space Information Corridor. So once you become a member, you will actually have a return of economic benefits. So you can see that very quietly, China is actually building this very interesting partnership structure, which is open-ended, but it also builds in dependency. On the other side of the world, the US plans to return to the moon with NASA's Artemis program. In this race to build a lasting presence in space, private space companies will play a crucial role. So I think it's fair to say that because of SpaceX, the United States has a definite edge over China in the near future of, of space exploration. Companies like SpaceX use private investment to build and operate a variety of rockets and spaceships. They operate on a profit, so they're able to provide services to NASA that are faster and cheaper than before. What Elon Musk did at SpaceX was incorporate the Silicon Valley mindset. A lot of the really big changes and things that are going to make a real difference in the future are going to come through the commercial lens. China is, is doing a lot of the things that the United States has already done in space, and they are on a path where if they continue over the next decade or two, and the United States sort of ha continues to have this muddled space policy, then China could catch up and pass the United States in space. The reason I don't think that'll happen is because as of now, the United States has a much more vibrant commercial space sector, led by SpaceX, but not exclusively SpaceX. And it's really this commercial space sector, I think, that is driving innovation. Despite benefiting from an edge at the moment, the message from researchers and observers is clear. The US needs clear goals and policy. The United States is still caught up with Cold War kind of missions, very symbolic missions. If you are stuck in symbolic missions, then you would miss the bus. So I think the U.S. needs to come out with an industrial vision for space. It needs to fundamentally understand that the space race today is not a repeat of the Soviet Union space race. 
The United States may have been the first and so far only country to land humans on the moon, but more than half a century later, it now faces a completely different race, where victory will be measured not in landings, but in long-term presence. Houston, the Eagle has landed.